this is me back again. Buongiorno. Today is a nice day. Sun is coming out. It's a great day here in Cremona. And uh, because of your comments down below in my previous videos, I somehow try to understand what is of your interest. Now, since you're a musician and you want to know everything, I'm here to answer all your questions and so the more comments you leave down below, the more better content you, I will deliver you. Today, I collected here all these nice pieces around me. I'm just cleaning my next Guarneri Ole Bull. And then next step, I turn over and then I make the thicknesses, right? And here we are coming to the point and the question. What happens if the thicknesses are not good? If it, the violin is too thin or too thick? And here, certainly, opinions go in all directions. And uh, there are some makers who believe that if they make three instruments a year, they can dedicate a lot of time for this single instrument and they make it, make it very, very precise and correct. And I do agree that certainly on the construction of an instrument, there are certain steps which are definitely important to dedicate a lot of time. Neck setting, fingerboard, sound post, bass bar, the arching, the thickness, but certainly you can also make things a little bit quicker if you, if you know what you do. A good example for this is Guarneri. He was not this precise like Stradivari, but even if you are now not into violin making, you understand that he worked very rough. And on the other side, me as a violin maker, if I look at his work and what he did, I can tell you that this man knew exactly what he was doing. He wasn't a stooped, drunken man. He was a violin maker who just focused on certain things which he knew are important to get the best sound out of his instruments. Now, what I do, I make different lines of instruments and I like to make a lot. Even so, I don't have that much time. I make videos here and then on my website, I write articles, I, I do um, the email responding in order if you write me that I write you everything. But on the other side, I'm a control freak when it comes to making and everybody here in the shop when they're working, I'm always there checking what they're doing because inside there will be my name as well, made in the workshop of Edgar Russ, how it is written in all Linea Maki violins. These now here are not my master violins. These are Linea Maki, which we prepared. Usually we don't have that many instruments. These are three violins, three back and three tops. We just prepared them because of coronavirus. We didn't know how things would happen. So in case there's a lockdown and we're not able to come here to work, people take three tops and they make three bass bars. The other one takes three back and starts finishing them, right? Now, when we have so many instruments, this is an extremely good occasion for me that I touch, I take the thickness uh, caliper, I think it's called, and then we see how things are and then say, okay, this is actually very good. And then we go on. Now, the secret of violin making is not to make every single piece the same way. The secret of making is to, to have as much experience as possible in order to decide to leave the maximum material on every instrument in order that a lot of material, once it is vibrating, is projecting its sound. And on the other side, take away as much in order that the whole thing just by tapping that the whole thing starts to vibrate okay so 
it's a completely not scientific thing what we're doing and you certainly there are the nice thing the, 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 with the loudspeaker and the modes of, of Hutchins and uh, there are other things where you have like um, um, hammers and these registers how it's bouncing back from the car industry and uh, uh, you have a lot of, of different ways but human beings are probably the the most precious and perfect machinery which is out there and I'm one of those and so I'm, I just dedicate my life to collect these informations and to apply it to the next violin I'm making. That's it. It sounds now really like wow the Stradivarius hand are still alive and the legacy continues. Yeah, it is like this. Now I have almost 40 years of experience because 40 years ago I started to make this guitar here so yeah I, I just dedicated my whole life for this and I, I, I the more I make the more I, I can't imagine to, to, to do something else and so this is what I'm doing now the pre question we were starting is what happens if the thicknesses are wrong because of making so many linea maki, I certainly had also some students here, let's say, or apprentice is a better word, who made some mistakes. Hmm? And so then I just said, okay, go on and then we see the final result. Okay? And Apple, they call it um, research. Here we call it just let's see, you know? So we had like more than one linea maki violin where we did something different and then we just listened how it turned out. Now, if it's too thin, the thickness, it, it shouts, it's extremely loud. And there were some makers I heard like 20, 30 years ago who were making these instruments extremely thin for one concert and then the musicians changed and took something else. Well, it's like uh, the, the one-way violin. I think it's a little bit uh, exaggerated if you think of something like this. Um, but at a certain point, if it's too thin, it would shout. And we wouldn't um, perceive it as quality and beautiful. We would just, it would be penetrating and, and, and hard and, and not nice, okay? So you need a mixture of loud, beautiful, and then also that you can decide how it sounds, if it's loud or silent. And those two thin violins, you have difficulties to play them piano, piano, piano. And fortissimo you have immediately, but then you immediately at the maximum of, of the fortissimo, there, there is nothing else coming. While a great master violin should be able to play very silent, very, very. And once you start giving power to the instrument, that you have the impression that there is no limit. That you, even as a listener and as a player, you always have the impression if you would love to, if you would give even more power with the bow, there would come more, even more out of it. And this would be exactly what we want, okay? With a too thin violin, this is not possible. A too thick violin is actually difficult to play, not moving, small in tone, and like beep, 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 beep. Yeah. And some people believe that these kind of instruments you have to play for like 20, 30 years and then it will start to sound. I never had seen a violin which has high, too high thicknesses, especially on the top, and it still was sounding well. For me, a violin is something which has to sound extremely great, especially if I dedicate my time, it has to sound super good. So this is what I'm doing here. Too thin is also another thing that the instrument would collapse is now a little bit a too tough word but it would certainly start deforming its shape of the arching and that's also something you don't like but this is the reason why we have already the arching so when I make thicknesses I, I don't really um, uh, think of statics 
all those who make thicknesses and talk about statics that the whole instrument doesn't uh, collapse they make two thick instruments an instrument a, t a top is approximately approximately three millimeters and actually more more precise 2.7 2.8 millimeters and a typical Italian violin has a quite uniform thickness of the top while on the back it's all a question about uh, making it a little bit like a loudspeaker with a thicker center and then it is thinner here and here okay um, Guarnieri made it less thick here, but kept the whole thing thicker in general. But by when I'm saying this, there's also some Guarnieri's where the center is like six millimeters, okay? That certainly influences the sound, but the most important is actually the, 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 the core, the, 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 the center of the whole sound energy, and um, sound machine is actually the top and the back uh, is, is, is more working on the character of the sound than on, on the <coughs> properties of the, of, the, of the sound while uh, properties I would say responding and, and volume and things like this. I hope you enjoyed this and even today you learned something and that's why I ask you please, please, I know you are not subscribed already, so subscribe and also the ring bell so then you see every video it comes and when you come home and you see a new video from Edgar and if you don't like it just throw it away and look at another one but there are hundreds of great videos so subscribe, do me this favor, it's the only way of that I get that somehow I, I a gratitude push subscribe and I'm really precious that you make part of this community and that you tell your friends that I'm here willing to explain you everything in order that you have your instrument in the best sound conditions and better under control okay thank you for watching see you next time bye bye